Hey guys, welcome back to Cattle Call, where the Western community meets together, where cowboys and cowgirls meet up to like talk about their real lives, raw issues, and we're in the love segment um, right now. So I have a special guest, and I think he's not just beautiful on the outside, <laughs> he is on the inside, and I want everybody to welcome Cam Payne to the podcast. Thank you so much for having me on Cattle Call. I love it. Good. I'm, I'm glad you're here. I wanted to, before we get started, um, I met Cam at WESA. <laughs> what a time. And, what a time. <laughs> and when I met him, and we were in the car, headed to your car, um, he was like, he asked me something about, Cat, can you help me with love? <laughs> and we got to talking, and then I said, we need to be on the podcast doing That's this. Right. You need to come on. Da, 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 da. So I'm glad you're here. Thank you so much. I appreciate <laughs> it. I'm glad I'm here too. This yeah. is crazy. And I think I've seen all your catacol stuff. It's amazing. Well, you're crushing it. Well, Absolutely crushing it. I'm glad you did so. Yes, ma'am. Thank of you. That means a lot. I want to know about Cameron. Now, I know who you are on. On TikTok, the shirtless wonder. <laughs> that's what I say, the shirtless wonder. But um, I, I want to know you, you know, and I think that's what other people want to know too. They want to know who Cameron is, like who you are, you know, deeply. Yeah. So tell, like, where did you come from? Your parents, your siblings. You have like three siblings? Yes, ma'am. I have two older brothers and a little sister, and they are just my absolute best friends. My mom and my dad, they're my best friends too. Uh, they've been married for 32 years now, and oh, it is just, I mean, the perfect storm of like seeing how to love people, mm -hmm. how to love each other, how to love your family, how to be a good dad, how to be a good mom. Um, it's just a perfect storm. Good example. So, yes, ma'am. Perfect yeah. example. Like yeah. the best example. And um, you have, okay, we're your brothers. How, yes, what's the age, how is y'all's age fall? So I'm actually, I guess, I'm a middle baby. Okay. Um, so my oldest brother is 29, uh, my middle brother is 27, and I'm 24, and my little sister is 20. Okay. So it kind of works out perfectly. Um, for a large part of my life, like growing up, my brothers, since their age gap is like so close, mm -hmm. um, they were always like riding to school together, like always hanging out. Mm -hmm. Then me and my sister, we're like kind of closer together since me and my middle brother are four years apart. It didn't really work out with like high school stuff. Yeah. Um, to like ride together. Mm -hmm. So me and my sister, I'd take her to school, but then my brother would take my other brother to school. Yeah, that and works. Me and her just became so close. So now me and her are just like the best of friends. She is incredible. I love her. She's also uh, potentially never gonna get a boyfriend. And I don't say that <laughs> in any way other than that she's always gonna be protected by yeah. three older brothers and a dad who are yep. all just That's how that's how my, I have three boys and one daughter, so I always say that Lillian is protected, she's got her dad, <laughs> a good protected. dad, and a, Very three, protected. three brothers. Yes, ma'am. But, um, what, I've seen your, y'all's glow up video. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma how, I mean, I did I by no means thought anybody was unattractive at all, but the glow up is nuts with that video. And I think everybody goes through their awkward stages as teenagers, but then you guys, so y'all were like, what? <laughs> it was great. What? It what? Was wild. Yeah. Shout out Chipotle. Shout out Chipotle. <laughs> Shout out Jesus. I'll tell you what, yep. that is all that I have to put on that Yeah. <laughs> For sure. That was good. Yes, What What groups did you hang out with in high school? Like, Actually, really funny. Um, I was never really like the popular guy. I was never mm -hmm. the guy who like had social media. Um, I was never the guy that was like going to parties on Friday nights or Saturday nights. Like it wasn't, I wasn't, I was never really invited. Um, mm -hmm. But also like we didn't choose to go. Me and my buddies every Friday night, I mean, we're at each other's houses, like just waiting till sunrise the next day to go fish. Yeah. Every single Friday, Saturday night, we're waking up at 6 a.m. on Saturday, 6 a.m. on Sunday, going to church at 9 a.m. That's awesome. That was every Friday, Saturday night. We were just hanging out, plotting what we were going to use, plotting where we were going to go. Yeah. How we're gonna get there? What fences are we gonna have to jump? Where are we gonna go? It's a illegal or legal? <laughs> so that's Mom, only if you're watching this. I promise you, I didn't do anything illegal. <laughs> so that's the only bad boy part of you was doing that. 
fiction yes, where you may not have yes, should have went. For sure. There okay. was a couple times we got shot at, for sure. Um, there was this one point that was right behind my buddy's house, and I mean, it was through the woods, over the bridge, past the state line, and, and everything, and it was, it was wild. It was probably six or seven fences we had to jump, but the best fishing you could ever possibly imagine. That's where they the usually life. are. Oh, I know. My I'm husband like, calls them the honey holes. Oh, the honey holes. The honey, honey holes. holes. Yeah. We had the honey hole. It was yeah. called, called the farm pond. Yep. Yeah. And uh, it was absolutely incredible. I caught. We caught fish after fish after fish, so our arms fell off. So yeah. it was perfect. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> yes, ma'am. That's that good, good fun. Oh, yeah. You know that. That's that. That down home, country fun, and, and that's kind of like, that's kind of how I was raised. It was just like, I was raised on a farm. Um, I was raised with, I mean, we had sixty-five acres growing up, and it was like where the houses were positioned. It was like my family was right in the cul-de-sac, and then. We, right behind our house was 60 acres, and then we actually built my grandparents a house on that land, too. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we was, we were like, I was six, seven years old, eight years old, and running over my grandparents' house every day, and we're just hanging out, fishing. My mom had a horse barn um, where she taught, and, and we rode horses, and that's where I learned, like, the western, I guess, side of things. The yes, western side that's of what, life. that was my um, next question. Yes, How did you get, I know... You come from where, Carolina? South, North? South Carolina. South, okay. I was, so I was born in North Carolina, and then we lived and moved to South Carolina okay. until I was 10. And then um, when we did, when, when I turned 10, uh, we moved to North Carolina. Okay. And I was raised, again, on 60 acres, having everything you could ever imagine. Um, absolutely incredible. And then the reason we moved to North Carolina was actually um, my dad lost everything. Um, he lost literally everything, his job, his company, our house, clothes on our back, um, every single piece of who we were. Uh, and we all moved in together with my grandparents, my grandmother on my mom's side in Columbia, South Carolina, in a two bedroom house that was seven mm -hmm. of us. And it was a time in my life where, you know, I was eight years old, nine years old, 10 years old, but I didn't realize it back then. Mm -hmm. But like what my parents went through to like make it seem like we actually had stuff going on, make it seem like we had money, make it seem like like everything was okay, everything was gonna be okay. And I think that's part of where I know that's part of where my relationship with the Lord comes from is just like I've seen the struggle and I've seen like I've seen the bottom. And like now I don't view money as something to to spend. I view it as a tool to bless people. Mm -hmm. I view it as a tool to change people's lives. Yeah. And all of that stems from seeing my parents as everything. Yeah. And now, like, I see them as my superheroes. Like, I truly, <clears throat> my parents are my best friends. And they're the best of the best. Yeah. And I've seen them, I've seen them lose it all. And uh, they're literally, like, it teaches my you superhero. How it teaches you how to be, I guess, really grateful for mm -hmm. things. And I think when you are your age and you're 24 and you're living by yourself, you realize how hard it is even to take care of yourself, probably yeah. have your own place, your car, or whatever. And they were doing it with you guys and three kids. You yeah, know? yeah, I mean, we had, again, they lost everything and they made it seem like we didn't lose anything. Yeah. Even though you see all the things going away, you see all the toys going away, the land going away, our, our house going away and us moving in and you're like, why? And my parents are like, it's just a season, like it's okay, I promise. Mm -hmm. Like we're still gonna make it work. We're still gonna make ends meet. And they weren't. Like they went into the hole, my dad went bankrupt and that whole thing happened. And so now it's just like it makes me eternally grateful for them and like it truly um, it makes me so just like emotional to think how much they did for me. Mm -hmm. And one day, I just want to walk up to them, even if they need it or don't, I want to walk up to them with a check for any amount of dollars yeah. and just say, well, y'all may not need it, y'all may need it. Even if you don't, I want to give it to you because y'all yeah. deserve the whole world. And if you, do, if you don't, they love you. Absolutely. No matter what. But that, I know, I get where yeah. you're coming yes, from with that. But they, you know, that's what parents do. They step up when they're in crisis and make sure your kids are protected in the middle of it. For sure. Yeah. I'm sure you've done the same thing yeah. for Lily. And yeah. And my parents have yeah, my parents, parents well. have done the same. Yeah. yeah. And I think that, that And I think that, that that's why I say you get you're so grateful 
for the things you had, especially when you realize what your parents sacrificed as you're getting older. Yes, ma'am. You realize all the things that they didn't talk about in front of you because <laughs> you're, you know, your yeah. kids, you don't need to know, but then you figure it out yes, ma'am. along the way. It makes you so, it makes you so, it, it makes you just eternally grateful. Like, yeah. All the time for my truck, my house, like a roof over my head, like AC, water, food, mm-hmm. everything down to like, the, I mean, to literally the bare bones of it. Like, yeah. It makes me so grateful every single day that I have anything in this mm-hmm. world because it's all, it's all fleeting. It's all running away. It's all not going to last. At the end of the day, the it really day. is about family. It always At is. At the end of the day, I know when Lily and I have lived in LA and New York, at the end of the day, what I have always come to the resolve at the end of it is, I miss my family. Yes, ma'am. All <laughs> this is really just in the moment, but at the end of the day, it's really about family. And I miss, we miss our family. Let's get back home, whatever. It, it really was always about that True. every time. Every that time. was the forefront, you know. And I think it's a testament of how you, like you move in here and things like that, you have to trust God in a whole different way when you are stepping out in a new way. And that's what we learned too, and I'm sure you've learned. So you moved to Texas, and I heard you just, signed a modeling contract yes ma'am so how's that going and who are you with can you talk about that it is wonderful yes ma'am i'm with campbell agency um i signed with them about a year ago ish okay um when i first was was here in texas Mm -hmm. um my ex-girlfriend actually introduced me to them Mm -hmm. and shout out the lord for that and that relationship and for campbell i mean it's been incredible um having this with social media has just been the biggest blessing Um, yeah and <laughs> I love it. It's literally my favorite thing in the world. I never would have ever thought I would be a model or like be able to do modeling stuff. Like I really didn't. Like looking back at when I was five foot six, 120 pounds, soaking wet, and <laughs> glow up. Yeah, like you could you could punch me and I'd fall down. You can be like this yeah. and I'd fall down. <laughs> yeah. Um and, and the glow up of, of what Jesus did for me, what Chipotle did for me, honestly, like mm-hmm. what eating did. Yeah. Um changed my whole life yeah. for sure and the course of it and it's really funny my dad and I actually we had always talked so long ago he even knew well before I gained any weight or like well before I had a quote unquote glow up um, he was like you're gonna model jeans one day you're gonna do it like American Eagle um, I mean any western brand you're gonna model jeans mm-hmm. I know you are 100% I was like no way dad there's no shot and then I am <laughs> and then Rango comes calling and then rock and roll denim comes called. Then panhandle comes called. And it just, it was like the wildest of wild things. And it still is. Yeah, I feel I, like I'm walking in blessing so much. I think your parents always see so much greatness in your kids yes, before they can see it. And then they're no, like, no. you were right. <laughs> yeah. they, ever got your, they were right. They were right. Oh, 100%. You know? I call them all the time. I'm like, I'm like, well, mama, well, daddy, look, you guys are right on another thing. <laughs> yeah. Just add it to the list of things yes. you were right about that I told you you'd never be right about, and then you are. Yeah. <laughs> Every time. Yeah. Every time. I find yeah. myself not even thinking that they couldn't be right mm-hmm. anymore. I'm just like, you guys are going to be right at some point, and this thing that I said can never happen is probably going to happen because you guys said it would. Yeah. You guys believed in me, and... And again, like goes back to the family thing. When the chips are down and you're out and you're counted out, there's going to be people that are in your life that love you wholeheartedly, and that's your family. Yeah. They're going to choose you every single time. They're going to love you every single time. They're going to give you all their love, all their grace, all their mercy every single time, just like Jesus. Yeah. And I'm so thankful for a family that does that. Yeah. All the time. Oh, and yeah. Well, be, before I want to kind of transition into talking about relationships, yes, ma'am. kind of <laughs> talking about past relationships that you've had and your most kind of recent breakup, and we won't say names. You don't ever have to say a name. We'll just re- reference X or whatever. Perfect. We really, I really want to talk to you more about lessons you've learned, things like that. Um, you don't even have. I mean, I'm gonna. Push to go a little deeper, <laughs> but um, before we do that, I, we've been going live on TikTok, so I'm going to kind of turn the live off so people have to tune in for uh, the other segments that we're going to have and talk about. We're going to have a couple more segments, so they'll have to listen on Spotify, YouTube, things like that mm-hmm. to 
hear all this, so we'll turn that off right now. We'll take a sec. Y'all tune in to Cat Call, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so, you were in a secret relationship between what and what? Uh, between roughly February ish of last year and April. Or really? Yes, ma'am. And. From here in Texas, you had a relationship? Yes, ma'am. Or no, it was, it, was, it was long distance because I lived in North Carolina. And oh. She did not. So, um, okay. nobody, knew about, nobody knew about that and nobody knows about that at all. Um, it was. It was private and a secret. Um, mm -hmm. Not on, I mean, it was kind of purposeful, honestly, because I think that social media can just like, it can destroy relationships. It can mess up relationships. It can become such a business and rather than a relationship. Exactly. I don't think that, it really can. Yeah, I, I don't think that that's what God calls us into. Um, I don't think he calls us into like a, a business working relationship, mm -hmm. but rather like an intimate, personal, genuine relationship. While you're talking about that, I'm while you're talking about that, I want to talk about that for a sec because okay. I see a lot of influencers. Mm -hmm. They hop from relationship to relationship, and I say influencers because you know they're on the internet, no doubt. and they do it as a business partnership instead of real love, and it's to grow numbers or for clout or whatever, and it's and that's where I think it gets lost. And you can't have, I think, I mean, it can be superficial, especially online, but, but behind the scenes, it can be more real. For sure. But I think they get lost in that. They and do. I, but I also, on the other side of the coin, a female could think, you're trying to hide me. Why don't you want the internet to know that we're together? And I think if you do it in a really tasteful way here and there, it, but it's not starting to be the career. Okay. You don't base your relationship on the business. You are just showing each other off here and there. Does that make sense to you? 100%. Yeah. That makes perfect sense. Because a girl is definitely yeah. going to want to know. Let I want all these girls to know. No doubt. <laughs> Just because something ended, just because something is not, we're not dating anymore, we're not in a relationship anymore, mm -hmm. does not mean that I don't care about you. Yeah. Just because I don't love what you do does not mean that it's not going to change how I care about you. It's not going to change how I love you right. at all. Yeah. Um, and people have it so wrong where like it goes bad and then the relationship goes bad. Mm -hmm. Like That's just so backwards, I think, of how the Lord like, like tells us to love and how the Bible tells us to yeah. love. Is love your enemy, and like when you get when you fall down seven times, you got to get back up eight. When they hit you on the cheek, you got to turn the other cheek every time. And I think that go into the marriage part. I definitely think you have to have that mentality in marriage. I agree. Um, and there's agreements that my husband and I that hopefully you can adapt or whatever that we made that we learned from our pastor many years ago when we first got married that we had to set some absolutes in our marriage mm -hmm. and once we set those like our love language was different our agreement the way we agreed for things was different the That's way huge. we fought was different That's after huge. you make those like it don't have to be a ton of absolutes but mm -hmm. there was a couple absolutes so i want to talk about that 
ask me about the absolutes and I'll, yes, I'll tell you. I'll I, ask you about I want that. you to know because you write them down and I love you know. <clears throat> I love to keep my wallet. <laughs> what I want to go into the relationship you had for like kind of the longevity that you had with um, a really beautiful model. Yes, ma'am. And you don't have to tell me, or you can, about how that like ended. And why you think it ended, like, and what you like learned from that yeah. in the middle of it. I think I learned a lot from that relationship, and the reason that ended was honestly the long distance. I think was really tough, and mm -hmm. I didn't have a plan yet of where I wanted to move. I didn't have a plan of where um, neither of us did had a plan of where we wanted to go, where the Lord was taking us. Mm -hmm. um, again, like I was, you know, 22 years old, and she was 21, and it just. We didn't know where we were going. Yeah. We didn't know where we were, we were going to end up, and it was scary and something that we'd never felt before. It was definitely, definitely the first girl that I've ever loved, mm -hmm. and that's so terrifying. Like so, so beautiful, but so mm -hmm. scary. Um, so we just didn't know where we were going to end up, where God was leading us, and we weren't in the same place. We didn't live in the same town, town at all. Uh, we didn't live near each other, <coughs> and. It just didn't work for that reason. And when when you visited her or she visited you, did you guys stay together? Did you stay apart? Yes. You did stay apart or yes. together? We stay, well, well, so when when we stayed, when I came to Dallas, because a lot of times I came to Dallas and mm -hmm. she um, she didn't come back to North Carolina, um, mm -hmm. but when I went to Dallas, she only came to North Carolina for one time. Um, but when I went to Dallas to see her, we stayed at her parents' house in like separate rooms okay. because I don't think, and this is a boundary for me, I don't think that you can stay in the same room with somebody. Um, I don't think that you should. That's just my personal opinion because mm -hmm. the devil's alive for sure and temptation is real mm -hmm. and I'm not strong enough. Like, yeah. I'm not strong enough. I know we're not strong enough regardless of if I have the Lord's protection. Like I know that the longer you flirt with the boundary, the longer you run the line, mm -hmm. you're going to step over that line. Yeah. You're going to run over that boundary. Like, the boundary and is it's clear. That's Should why be. I wanted to ask you that question, because I wanted to know, like, so you obviously, that's your boundary. Yes, ma'am. I, I think that God has things set up in place, you know, about, like, courtship. I don't no think doubt. people court each other anymore. They have one-night stands, quick hookups, you know. And they can see somebody online or whatever, and they think that they know who they are, mm -hmm. but they really don't. You know, it <laughs> takes, it, there is a time that takes, yeah. and then when you are married, then you have children. There's no, is he going to stay with me? Is she want, does she still want me? Whatever. There's none of those questions because there is a thing of alignment yes, that I think aligns up. And that's why I think so many things doesn't work out. If you do live with each other beforehand, it kind of complicates a lot of things. But it also, to me, I always said, say this, and I've said this to my daughter, um, why be a wife when you're a girlfriend? Yes. He gets the benefits yes. of a wife. Come on. You're talking now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I love it. He gets the benefits it. of a wife when he hasn't put a ring on it. 100%. So, no doubt in my mind. Yeah. No, no. Like, it, it, it's the question of, like, why would you want to play married? Yes. Married? Yeah. Why would you want to, like, you should, you should be dating, you mm -hmm. should be engaged, and you should be married. Yes. Like, there's no, you shouldn't play marriage in the dating, you shouldn't play marriage, honestly, in the engaged state. Because my brother's described it to me best. He's been married for two and a half years now. Mm -hmm. And he's like, man, I did not realize, and I'm sure you can attest to the same thing. Mm -hmm. I did not realize before I got married how much time I had, how much a long time I had. To mm -hmm. just be with me, regardless of if we were in a relationship yeah. or not. Like I was always coming home to my apartment. I was always coming home to where I lived. Mm -hmm. And that time with myself, that time being alone, was so precious. And now, when you're married, everything you do is together. There is nothing you do in secret. But and I feel like Cam, you are emotionally mature. Yes, do you feel that way? Like you have an emotional maturity. I would like, say so. Yes, with women, like. You know, sometimes women are needy. For sure. Women want, like, attention and affirmations and things. Of course, you know about the love languages. Yes? yes. My favorite thing in the world. 
<laughs> so what is, let me tell, what is your love language? Um, my top one is definitely physical touch, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, and these are from my perception of how I love. Um, yeah. I love with like holding hands and um, like giving hugs and kissing and just like the really, really simple stuff because I think those things are truly a gift from God. Like holding hands is a daggone gift from the Lord. I'll tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's so simple, but like yeah, just a that's little good. touch no, that's is so, good. so wonderful. Um, and quality time does not, does not fall far behind that for mm -hmm. sure in terms of how I, how I love. I think you can... If you can just be with a person and just be in their presence, like yeah. you don't even have to be talking about anything, but just being with them yeah. in their presence is beautiful. Yeah. And if you're comfortable there and like the silence is not awkward, I think that's wonderful. I, I think that if more men knew that women, especially women who grew up loving God or right. even found God now, that if more women knew or more men knew that women find God in the man. Mm -hmm. It is the sexiest thing I thought I said that before we started filming. But it is my daughter and I have discussed, you know, she it can be an unattractive person preaching the word of God and she'd be like, Mom, oh my he is so attractive. <laughs> and I'm like, it's the God in him. That's what that is what you are finding in him that because to me, I've always said this, God is that magnet between two people that will always draw you back together. Always. And if he's seeking God and you're seeking God, you're always going to be drawn back together. 100%. Because if he's wrong or if you're wrong, God is going to kind of press up on your heart. You need to apologize. No doubt. You were wrong in that situation <laughs> or whatever, no and you can do that, you know, with each other. 100%. So you definitely believe in, like, finding, like, true love. I do. And a um, God love. I'm a hopeful romantic, and yeah. I believe in Jesus wholeheartedly that he will provide me a wife. Um, yeah. I believe that to a T. Mm -hmm. And I've always said it like this, like, two things. Number one, every single christ Christ-centered relationship has a 100% success rate. I believe like, that. Like, there is no divorce rate with that. When there are two people wholeheartedly chasing after Jesus, and they're choosing him every single day, and they want their relationship with him to be forefront above the other person there's no way it can go there's no shot like no chance because god is going to talk to you uh, god is going to work through of yes 100 percent, and be like right before you walk in the door maybe you had a bad day and like your wife is like right there ready for you but you had a horrible day and you're going to project that onto her i'm not married but i can see that happening mm -hmm. and god is going to give you the out right before you walk in the door to say hey calm down tell you love her Go give her a hug. Tell her you had a bad day and move on. Like, and, don't. and honestly, most women will be okay with that. Mm -hmm. They want to know what's going on. Mm -hmm. They want to hear about your day or what's happening or whatever because we're fixers by yeah. nature. We can be fixers. <laughs> yes, and we want to hear it. And if you and we can sense it. Mm -hmm. So if you're if you're feeling heavy, I mean if you have the right partner, they're gonna be like, What's going on? What's yeah. up? And it's okay to talk about it. A lot of guys will hold their their feelings inward. For sure. And as women, you know, we don't. You know, we're going to talk about it. So you guys talking to us about it makes us feel included, mm -hmm. I guess, For and sure. all that. I agree. I, I, and I think you mentioned this before, but I've always said that, like, think about it like a math equation. Like, when you get two people that are relentlessly chasing after Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. Like, what is... 0.5 times 0.5. It's actually 0.25. But what is 1 times 1? That's 1. So if you have two people that are whole on their own before they step into the relationship, mm -hmm. I promise you, there's no shot at fails. That's right. No That's shot. Good. Because if you're not whole on your own before you step into that relationship, you are going to seek the other person and like want the other person to fulfill a spot that only Jesus can fill. That's right. And that's so... It's so hard. Like, it's so tough. And it's I think so people definitely get partners now to fill a void in, in, in that person, and then they have an expectation. I then when they don't fit that expectation, <laughs> they get disappointed or upset about it, and it's really, it's you're, you're really needing God no for the fill-up. Mm -hmm. And then you pour out yeah. into your partner or whatever. Mm -hmm. But it's God that's the filler, not the person. 100%. <laughs> yeah. You are only able to... 
pour out what God has filled you with. That's right. That is all that you're able to pour out. Mm-hmm. It's everything that He is. Yep. Is all that you're not. It's truly. goodness. Yeah, it's, it's His goodness. <laughs> it's His grace. It's His mercy. It's His love. I truly believe that when you love the Lord and you love God with your whole heart, you love other people so, so well. Yeah. Like, so well. So much better than you could ever imagine. And, and people, I just think that people don't realize that. They're like, oh my gosh, like, how are you so joyful? How are you so, how are you so peaceful? How are you so gentle? Like, yeah. how did that not phase you? That, that would phase or destroy any other person. I'm like, mm-hmm. I have God. Like, we have God. Yeah. We have a Father who loves us and runs after us every single day. Even when we don't choose Him, yeah. He still loves us. That's right. And it's beautiful. And, and like, that is the rock that I stand on. Like, there's honey on the rock, and I will seek that rock every single day. Mm-hmm. Every day. And your future wife's there. And my future wife's there. She's I, there. I've always said this, that, like, and especially with, like, being in a state of singleness right now, mm-hmm. I don't want to find my wife unless she finds me through Jesus. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to find her unless I find her through Jesus. Yeah. Like, I want us both to run to him and then run to each other at that yeah. point. And, and I've always said that, oh, no. <laughs> said, um, that like the Lord and how he's going to show you I think your future spouse mm-hmm. for me and this is the way that I believe it is mm-hmm. when you're running your race like I am running my race relentlessly after Jesus like that is my goal he is my goal heaven mm-hmm. is my goal bringing other people to Christ is my goal mm-hmm. when you're running that race he is going to tell you like you're relentlessly running there he's going to tell you hey look left look right there's your person like they're running at the same pace at the same speed at the same trajectory and in the same direction. Yeah. And that's the person. Yeah. That's the person. So, you know, there's a lot of people that think, like, I think that was one of your questions somebody asked you, something about, do you ever feel like you, what was the question? I'll have to go back and look. Do you ever feel like you could miss something that God had for you? And <laughs> What do you think about it? Because I, I don't think... Ain't no shot. No. No shot. Mm-hmm. You miss anything that God has for you. No. Like... What's for you is for you. What is for you, what is made for you, will not miss you. No. It'll never be... It won't be a second too late. It won't be a second too early. It's going to be right on time. Mm-hmm. Just like God is every time. Yeah. I mean, look at your life. Look at every day of your life. Everything that you've done up to this point and that you're going to do is right on time. Yeah. It's been right on time. Every time you thought... There's no way I make it through this. Guess what? You're still breathing. You're still alive. Yeah. You're still here. He still has you here for a reason and a purpose. Yeah. And, and I hope that everyone that listens to this understands God has a purpose for your life. And as long as you have breath in your lungs, that purpose is still alive. Yes. You are still yeah. alive. And it is wonderful. And you should chase that. And a lot of people go, what is my purpose? Yeah. And I always, and I, in my last segment that I did about self-love, you got to love yourself kind of as a foundation. For sure to even understand how to love a partner if mm-hmm. you don't love God in yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, but I can tell that you have obviously a foundation from your family, your parents. Where do you feel like that you got to a point that you said, this is for me? Like you grabbed a hold of God on your own and said, I'm running with God. Not just your parents teaching you in mm-hmm. the the Sundays and the friends and all the things, but like, when did you go? You could hear God, and you know, <laughs> no doubt. Um, August of 2018, 2018 was a huge year. It was a year that I transferred to Auburn, um, and I met a man named Gage Henry, mm-hmm. and he truly changed my life. One beignet and coffee that will get together um, mm-hmm. changed my life and changed the, the whole trajectory of my life, the, my direction, everything. Um, like, I always thought that I had a relationship with Christ, but it was so, it was so gone with the wind, it went the wind, gone with the wind. Mm-hmm. Like, it was like a, a plastic bag floating through the air, truly. Mm-hmm. It would go this way and go that way. Yeah. Um, and he, a conversation with him that just was, he basically just told me, you are made for so much more. Like, you're made for so much more than, like, partying and drinking doing all that stuff and like falling to the ways of the world mm-hmm. you don't have to do those things to be cool you don't have to do those things to to fit in like you're not made to fit us Christians are not made to fit in. Mm-hmm. like we're made to be difference makers we're yeah. made to change people's lives we're made to to bring joy to the people around us yes through our actions and do what we do and that was the moment for sure um, that year transferring to Auburn 
walking on the football team, that just truly changed my whole life. I didn't know this. So, yes, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yes, ma'am, right? So, you played <laughs> football. I did, yes, For Auburn. Yes, ma'am. And you had a run with the partying and all that. I did. And that's what brought you to Christ. Yes, ma'am. Is that. Because I think you can get to a place, you're like, this isn't fulfilling me, the parties aren't, the girls, the running around, whatever. And I think people do get to a place like, what, where is it? And then God shows up. He's 100%. always been there. And he's like, God here, shows up. This, it's me you're missing. <laughs> so God that, shows up. okay. And, and uh, I remember a specific day, February 3rd, 2018, me and my best friend, Coke, um, we made a pact to each other. Hey, we are made for so much more than this because we're going to church on Sunday mornings, but like we're still smelling like alcohol. We're still we're still drinking, and we're still like last night is on our lips, right? Mm -hmm. And we knew that we were made for so much more. Mm -hmm. We just couldn't break the cycle, mm -hmm. and God broke that cycle, and He brought me a best friend that truly changed my life. And now, I'm not saying we haven't slipped up. I'm not saying that I don't, yeah, I don't have a beer for sure. Yeah. Um, because I do enjoy a good beer for sure. Hey, that's a beverage. After okay, I smoke God it. is like, come on, the Irish drink oh, all the time. You I think know. you're all going to hell? No, it's a beverage. It's okay. After I smoke a little redfish and, and, and catch a big old fish, I definitely have a drink. But yeah. we've kept each other accountable. We've held each other accountable since that day. And mm -hmm. that day changed our life. Um, that day was the day that we decided enough is enough. And we're running towards Jesus. And ever since then, it's been on fire. I've been on fire. I love him more than I could ever imagine. Yeah. Too. That is so, 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 so good. So I love special. that, Cam. So I really special. do. I'm going to ask you a few other questions about <laughs> are you a jealous guy? And let me say this because we were just kind of discussing this before we got started because we were talking about jealousy. And I said, whoa, 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 let's talk about it on the podcast. Mm -hmm. I think there's a couple levels. Now, mm -hmm. you said you may think there's four or five levels, mm -hmm. and there could definitely be. But to me, I think jealousy is not, oh wait, I mean, it's not a good thing. God talks about it not being a good thing, envy, jealousy, blah, blah, blah. I think to our human flesh, there is a form of jealousy, especially maybe in us, especially women. Jealousy, if, <laughs> well, like, if our... <laughs> if our man, to a degree, gets jealous that it, that another guy is like paying us too much attention, or he's that guy's flirting with you, or whatever, that he says, you know, I don't really like that. I think that guy's flirting with you. I think that's a level, you know. And a girl can go, oh, he noticed, like he's a little <laughs> jealous, you know. And it's kind of almost not heavy, but you know he cares. Mm -hmm. But then there's the jealousy of. I, you can't go here. I don't want you to follow your dreams. Uh, you can't pursue this for yourself. You, I don't want you wearing that. Um, uh, that guy looked at you. Well, I can't help it. He looked at me. You know what I'm saying? Like that starts to be controlling, narcissistic, mm -hmm. crazy jealous, and that is so unhealthy. What Dude, What are your thoughts? On that? I, I, always, I I always agree with that. I okay. that there's. I'm not a jealous person. I don't mm -hmm. really think that I, I really ever have been. Mm -hmm. And especially recently, I think in the last couple of years, I've realized that if there's a choice, like if there's a either, if there's a choice between me or another guy, or like me or another thing, mm -hmm. always choose that other thing. Like if it's a woman deciding between me or someone else, like maybe she's going on a date with me or going on a date with someone else, mm -hmm. or somebody has like, thought about me for a job or not thought about me for a job, um, always choose that other person because I don't want to get picked out of some option. Like, I'm not an option. Um, I know yes. my worth in Christ. I know what I, what I bring to the table. And, and that's, not, that's not being cocky like, at all. No, that's just like, I don't think so. I'm not a choice. You're not a choice. Whoever's listening to this right now, like, you are not a choice. At all, you'll never be the choice. Well, not a first or second or third choice. Yeah, you're, you're not a you're first. You're not an option. You're you not are option. one or nothing. It's, <laughs> it's you or nothing. Like yeah. it's, it's that's all it is. Yes. And um, <laughs> I think when you think in that mindset, it's it begins to be a lot more healthy, and you don't really get jealous. Um, I think it it kind of looks like as for the um, like oh my goodness.
and she looked at me like if my if my girlfriend said oh my goodness she looked at me I'm like yeah I mean I probably would too because you're beautiful look at you yeah. you are gorgeous and I love the mindset yeah, you just you said I love that yeah I do and 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 people should realize that like you you got her like yeah. you're going on dates with her you're getting to kiss her you're getting to hold her hand you're getting to, to for her to be your passenger princess yeah. like you're getting to go to church together you're getting to worship Jesus together he's not. <laughs> so why why would you why would you be jealous? And because you know your worth in that, that's what keeps the woman hooked. For sure. And that's what men need to know. Yes, ma'am. Is that and what do you, since we're talking about that, what do you think about I think a lot of people have lost this form of masculinity mm-hmm. and I think women want the masculinity because they can be feminine. If you're masculine, does that make sense? Like I can be the feminine part of me. Otherwise, I have to be masculine. If you're not doing your part, or you know, in our relationship, and I have to step up in a man's role and almost be masculine. Does that make no, that, sense? Yeah, that makes perfect. So, if a man in a relationship is that masculine partner, and I I, I watch a. Or listen to Girls Gone Bible. Mm-hmm. I said my, great, my I love great. them. They're wonderful. The <laughs> I said my podcast is a Western version of Girls Gone Bible and Call Her Daddy because I, I will be a role <laughs> too, and yeah. let's talk about it. Um, and I'm not going to worry what God thinks in a lot of things. Not not that I don't worry about what God thinks, but I really think it's I don't give a crap what a lot of people think because I know who God is in me. So we're going to talk about it because we're real and we're humans and I'm not going to be fake. No doubt. Period. No doubt. So I think, you know, that's why this podcast is the way it is. Like I want to talk about the real and raw things, but I want to talk about God Mm -hmm. because he is the core of all this Mm -hmm. for me. And I think at the end of the day for for my guests, whether they realize it or not, <laughs> you know, some may, you know, may not know God, but hopefully at the end of it, they do. Mm-hmm. But I do think that the masculinity thing in a relationship is so, that's what they were talking about. If men, more men would step up and be the masculine partners, and I think so many men because of social media. No doubt. Um, especially, I've noticed it tons, and Lillian did it in LA. Guys that are in that social media realm don't pursue mm-hmm. because they're so used to being pursued through DMs and stuff. But a real masculine guy of God knows to pursue because God pursues us, and and he, I think he wants that. And it says, what is it? A man, a man who finds a wife is blessed. I think that a man finds her. That means he pursues her. And men who do not pursue and want to be like, I definitely think a man wants to be reciprocated once he's pursuing a girl. He wants to know, are you interested? Where are you at? But a guy that leads, a girl's like, you got it, man. (laughs) You got it, really. 100%. I I totally agree. I I think Proverbs says it best. He who finds a wife finds a good thing. Yes, that's And the it. Lord finds favor in that guy. That's like, right. the Lord finds favor in that. Yes. That you found her. Yeah. But you have to seek that out. Like, you have to... It's not chasing, but it's seeking. It's, yeah. it's, it's having God's eyes to be able to see, hey, this is somebody worth value. Like, this is somebody worth pursuing. This is somebody worth building the kingdom with. And yeah. this is somebody who's not. Just having God's eyes and, like, asking Him to give you His vision for just a second, just to see that person. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that as for the masculinity in today's day and age, people, guys need to read Ephesians 5, uh, Ephesians 5 on how to be a good man because it's, it's not just how to be a good man, but it's, it's how to be a man worthy of being like loved by a good woman because I think oftentimes guys in today's society expect this really, really good woman and you're not being a good man. Yeah. And you expect her to love you, and you be worthy of being submitted to, but you're not being someone who is worthy of being submitted to. Right. So you have to be someone that is worthy of the love of a good woman, and, and then the Lord finds favor in that. Yes. So, and I think people get really, it gets really tilted in a does. different way when people say, um, uh, submissive. 
agree. Because, oh, well, women are this. and women, It's not about that. I think when a woman knows that God is leading the man, they are going to get up under their man because they know who he is. I agree. And they will be, they will follow. Because I think that's in our nature. We, That's what I mean about, I guess, the masculinity. But it is really a man being led by God. Then we trust to be submissive. Mm-hmm. So... That's so good, Cam. I, I agree. love it. So <laughs> I agree. Good. I think I, I think about it all the time, just like Proverbs thirty one thirty. Uh charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting. Mm-hmm. But a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. That's right. That's that is true. the woman that I'm seeking. And more than that, like I'm seeking to be an Ephesians five man. Like one that is worthy of being loved by that Proverbs thirty one woman. Yeah. And if I do that every day, I know God's gonna bless me. Yes. I know he's gonna bless me. I I that. And he's gonna bless my marriage and my kids and my kids' kids and yes. everything that goes with it. Yeah. For sure. So I, I agree. <laughs> Long story short. That's so it. good. I uh-huh. love it. Yes. Okay. I want to move into some questions like that people had, mm-hmm. things like that. Um, I know you mentioned this earlier about you and your husband had some absolutes that you wrote down in your marriage, and I really want to hear those. Well, I'll share one with you for sure that I think that everybody, whether you're in a big relationship that you know it's going to move forward to, well two things that I think if you think are thinking marriage my husband and I did counseling before we got married good word right there we love that I think you yes. do need to get like a godly counsel no and you talk about all those things like what marriage looks like to you like children da, 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 da. but absolutes something that we realized after we were married we wrote this. We wrote several down, but one that has always stuck to me in our fights, you know, like mm-hmm. I said, go quick, is there's no out yep. in this relationship. You're going to work through it, no matter what you face. Now, of course, I'm not talking about abuse or anything like that, you know, one or the. But if you both know God and you write down an absolute, that there's no out. So you know when you're fighting, we got to get to a resolve here. It's just how quickly we get to it because we're not going to go, I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm leaving you. Here's the ring. I'm throwing it at yeah. you. You know, there's yeah. none of that. There's an absolute that we're in it to win it till the end. We're finishing this together. That's it. That's good. So that's an absolute. That's good. We're in. Okay. I love that. And you write it down. Yes, ma'am. And you stand on it with each other. You know. I will. Okay, I want to ask you a couple more questions, and this may seem, I don't, I don't want you to have to explain for yourself mm-hmm. the, for the second question. The first question, what is your red flags? Like, what is a red flag to you in, say you go on a first date, mm-hmm. what is something you go, whoa? I think somebody who says one thing and does another. Um, mm-hmm. I think someone who just who their actions, her actions don't match her words. Okay. Um, what she says and what she does do not align. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's a red flag. Uh, I wouldn't say there's there's. That's that's a difficult question. It really is. Yeah. I think you have to kind of go a little further than a first date. I, I agree. mean, I definitely think you could start seeing them on a first date. Mm-hmm. Um, like if say the female was talking about her ex the mm-hmm. whole first date, do you feel like that's a red flag? I think so. I think so. I think I think there's a difference in talking about your ex and talking about your past relationships. Yes. And so if she's talking about him as in a person mm-hmm. and like talking as if there's there's still a chance that they might get back together, mm-hmm. I think that's an issue. Um, but I will say this, and I've always said this that. Like leading up to the first date, I don't go on many first dates because. I want to be a good picker to begin with. Like yeah. before we get to the first date, yeah. I want to know a lot about you and a mm-hmm. good amount about you that I'm like, all right, yes, check. We can go on a first date. Let's do it. Yeah. But I don't think that that going on first dates is. I think that's that's a that's a sacred thing. I think dates are a sacred thing. I think yeah. dates are that 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 that's a chance to open your heart to somebody, mm-hmm. and that's not scary, but it should be reserved. Do you think everybody. dating is sacred? Like, if I'm going to go on a date with you, mm-hmm. like Cam says, I'm going on a date with you, so that means we're in a more serious situation. Mm-hmm. Or 
and that's part of the courtship. Mm -hmm. So you reserve, like, I know this person, we're going to go grab coffee to kind of know each other, yep. not full out go on a date. Is that kind of how you do it? There are definitely different different levels, different sections okay. of a date, for sure. Okay. Um, I think a walking date in general is a great date. Mm -hmm. And I know everyone's going to say that's not a great date. <laughs> but number one, it gets you moving. Like, yeah. it gets you active. It gets you comfortable. Because I think dinner, I think dinner is a silly first date. I've always said that mm -hmm. because, look, you're just looking across from each other. And, yeah, we might be both great conversationalists, but going to dinner and just eating and talking, I don't think that's special. I think doing something that moves your body, mm -hmm. I think doing something that makes you comfortable, makes you feel alive, gets you some sunlight together. So, going fishing? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> going fishing <laughs> so is that's like not my sacred. ideal it's, first date. <laughs> that's what I was going to ask you yeah. next. The ideal first date is to go fish. My ideal first date, I'd say right now with the tools that I have. Mm -hmm. um, I would take her on the boat. I'd take her fishing for mm -hmm. sure. Um, we'd bring like a little picnic out there on the boat and just honestly drive around, just listen to music, fish a little bit. I'd teach her how to fish if she doesn't know how to. I like it if she did, but if she yeah. doesn't, it's okay. Yeah. Um, and if she's wearing Crocs, that's a bonus for sure. If she'll <laughs> wear Crocs, that's a bonus. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, always has been. I don't, I don't even think I've really ever met a woman that will wear Crocs with me. But if she does, I'll probably marry that woman first, like on site. I know somebody <laughs> that wears Crocs. Really? Yeah. Huh. I'll keep that to myself. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. um, but okay. yes, that would, that would be the beginning of the first day. <laughs> That'd be the beginning of the first day, and then we'd probably, um, honestly, that'd be till like sunset, and then watch the sunset from the boat, mm -hmm. um, and go and just sit in the back of my truck and just listen to music and talk, because I think you need to like get out of, like be in a situation where you're comfortable, be yeah. in a situation where you feel comfortable to talk, Yeah. and I want to make her feel so safe and so comforted and so like well-loved during that, and I don't think you can do that during, like over dinner. So. I think... There is something to say about sharing a meal with each other. I agree. And I think you have to watch who you share meals with. No doubt. I, that's me and my wisdom in older age. You no know, doubt. there's certain people that I won't share a meal with mm -hmm. anymore because I think that you've got to watch what table you sit at and, I agree. and participate in eating a meal because I think meals are, can be sacred too. I'm sure. And that's a little deeper and spiritual. But, no, that's so good. Like, But the, as I've gotten older, you know, like people that my husband and I, not necessarily, we don't like you or whatever. It was, it's more of, do we want to sit down and, sh and break bread with this group of people that is not who, like, we are? I agree. Not that, you know, yeah, we'll grab a coffee or something to drink or whatever and be kind and share conversations. But if you know that they're, they're living a certain way and we're living a certain way, it's probably not the best to intermingle. I totally agree with Got that. It? Like, okay. I mean, think about the Bible. Like, that is what they did. That is Jesus and, and the Sabbath and the meal on the Sabbath was, like, the most important thing. Mm -hmm. It was it was absolutely imperative that you had a good meal and that you were all together with good people, with yeah. good company. And so yeah. you're right. You have to share. You have to watch who you share meals with yeah. because that's a... That's a sacred thing. And I don't really think people think about that stuff. No, they either, don't. Not either, at all. Not either. at all. And I think that's wisdom and over time. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, your parents probably teaching you so much about all that. But I, I agree. <laughs> my next question is, and this is where I said you don't have to talk about it personally uh, if you don't feel, you know, comfortable. What have you learned or have you learned about soul ties? Like, that I'm kind of going into the part of like sexual soul ties uh -huh. and people sleep around a lot mm -hmm. and they create like a soul tie and people go, why can't I get away from this person? Mm -hmm. Why can I not, you know, this guy I met one, one week and yeah. we were intimate, yeah. then how come I can't stop thinking about him when I know he's not good for me? Or I've been with somebody for a year and we've been together and been in that space, those create soul ties. So do you, can you tell like the audience on like what you believe a soul tie is and like how do they break that soul tie? I think soul ties is so real. Soul ties are absolutely a thing. And I think the game goes back to like playing married, right? When you're just dating. Yeah. Um, and if you engage in the same things that are made only for marriage, 
in, in, in dating and in courtship with somebody, mm -hmm. you're going to create a soul tie that was never meant to be there to begin with. Because when you do get married, again, I'm not married, yes. I'm single, um, but when you do get married, biblically speaking, you become one person. Mm -hmm. Like that is your soul tie. Yeah. So think about it, and the way I think about it, and, and how I know soul ties are like real, is, is you think about the Bible, and then when you become married, you become one person. If you're not married and you do the same things that's only meant for marriage, you're technically becoming one person. Yeah. So that's what a soul tie is. Soul yeah. ties are truthfully real and soul ties can be broken a hundred percent. Because I think while soul ties are real, I do think that soul ties are honestly the devil. Um, I think the devil's way of trying to steal your joy. I think mm -hmm. the devil's way of trying to steal your joy away from marriage and your joy away from the night that you do, you do get married and historically and biblically speaking, you do like have sex with each other. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's the devil's way of trying to steal the joy away from that moment, away from mm -hmm. that night. And I think you need to run to Jesus yeah. when you do have those soul ties. Um, and and it's more than just running to Jesus. Like I think that that is that's like one of the three steps. I think number one, you commit the sin, right? You do the thing. Mm -hmm. Number two, you 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 repent from it. But then the third thing, the most important thing, you can't continue to sit in that thing. You can't continue to go engage to in the same yeah. thing and go back to it and run back to it because it's comfortable or it feels good or whatever it is. You have to run away from it. That's the mm -hmm. third thing. Like you cannot continue to sit in that sin, in that sexual temptation, in yeah. that sexual sin with that person, whoever it is. Yeah. So. And it does, I think, take God, think like so. you said, with repentance and saying, God, help me. Oh, help me break this. So I don't go back to that toxic or that relationship um, because it takes God to really break it and then stay away from it. No doubt. So you're not entering back into it with that same person or someone new. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, the, the diving in and out of relationships with people and they go, Why, what's wrong with me? Why am I depressed? Why is this, 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 this? A lot of it, I believe personally, is you're sleeping with all these different people and then you're going through this, you, what they, who they are, that's such an intimate space. I have seen females tell, you know, talk to me over the years that have said, after I slept with this guy, I'm so different. Why? Why am I so different? Why am I acting like this? I never acted like that before. I'm like, you have a soul tie. You're, you've almost taken on how he behaves yeah. <laughs> so you've got to cut yeah. it and you know prayfully get rid of that mm -hmm. so you can get removed from that because that is a spiritual bonding mm -hmm. avatar yep. you ever watch avatar i've never seen avatar actually oh Pretty my god you gotta watch <laughs> it. it to me it's very spiritual yes but the avatars go to find this flying thing they get on top mm -hmm. of and the way they seal the bond mm -hmm. is they take their ponytail Oh and gosh. they grab the hair of that, like a horse. Uh -huh. You just say a horse. You, they put it together and it seals it. And almost like you get each other. It's like the eyes of that creature, that horse that you're going to fly around. The eyes, like, you get each other. That's crazy. And then they let you on their back. That, to me, I was like, that's a soul tie. That's a soul tie. When I watched sure. it, I was like... That's sealing the bond. No doubt. That's sealing the that, Yeah, that's totally. Uh, you have to watch it, I, but that's what I've seen when I've seen it. And I know people have watched it. So when they do, yeah. that's like a soul tie. It's like. Yeah. It just pulls you right in. Yeah. And you Man. it would take God to pull that. It does. Apart. Only God. It, only and I think, God. I think soul ties can even. Soul ties are not just physical. Like soul ties are not just sexual soul ties. Yes. I think that you can have emotional soul ties to people too. Absolutely. And I think that's where a lot of people in this world end up being being broken and being hurting is because you've had conversations and you've shared stories with people that were never meant to hear that stuff. Mm -hmm. They were never meant to have that conversation with you. They were never meant to bear that weight of what you were telling them. And so again, it goes back to like picking well. And asking God to give you discernment to pick well to begin with, so that when you do get into a relationship with that person, you don't have to worry about that. You don't have to worry about, oh my goodness, am I going to create an emotional or physical soul tie with this person? Mm -hmm. Because you've already picked well from the very, very beginning. Yeah. Um, so I think that yeah, emotional soul ties are definitely a thing. I do. Yeah. I've had emotional soul ties as well. Like mm -hmm. 
I've had conversations and just talked about things and been vulnerable with people. I mean, it, it can go for friendships too, but especially yeah. relationships. I've had people that I'm just like, why did I ever, why was I ever that vulnerable with you? Like, right. I'm a vulnerable person and like, I love being transparent. I love yeah, being vulnerable because mm -hmm. I ain't afraid to cry. I never have been, I never yeah. will be. Um, my mom always calls me like, her mama's boy that's not a mama's boy. And I'm like, what does that mean, mom? And she said, well, <laughs> it's like, you're not the weird mama's boy, but yeah. you're the mama's boy that, that is not afraid to show his emotional side. So I think there are emotional soul ties, but I will say this, that hurt people do hurt people. Absolutely. But hurt people turn into heal people who help people. That's right. All the time. Every single time. And the only way that you can turn into a healed person from a hurt person is through God. That's and right. God alone. And, and I've... I've always, I've always been like this, and that's probably why my mom says the same thing about me, and my dad says the same, mm -hmm. same thing about me. Anytime I, I go on a date with a girl, or anytime I tell them about a woman, they're always like, did you tell her you love her yet? I'm like, dad, <laughs> this is the first day I've ever met her. He's like, yeah, I know, when's the wedding? Yeah. <laughs> like, well, you know what, you guys know me too good. Um, yeah, I, I just think that, that I am, I'm always going to be a lover. I've always been a lover boy, 100%, mm -hmm. and I'll always be that way, and I'd rather put my heart on the line a million and a half times mm -hmm. and get it broken a million and a half times rather than never putting my heart out there ever again. Well, you talking about your mom, mm -hmm. mama's boy. My favorite one. <laughs> That's <laughs> a good thing. We love her. Uh, and my grandmother. I love that about you, Cam. Yes, and I love that about guys, you know, being a mama's boy. I have three sons, and to me, they're... I didn't even know that. What? Yes. No way. Yes. <laughs> I never knew that. Yes, I have three sons, 31, wow. 28, and uh, 14. And oh then goodness. Lillian, she's 23. Wow. Yeah. That's wild. So, I love that. I, and I love that they're, they, like, depend on me mm. and things like that. So, I love that about you as well. I know women cannot, like, love that. Mm -hmm. But people have said to you about your like what's on your lips? What's on, you know, moisturizing and stuff. Be like, my mama taught me that. That's my mama taught me that. My sister taught me that. I've seen them do skincare routines and all this stuff. Yeah. And and for a long time, like a long part of my life, I had horrible acne, and I went on Accutane, and like it was bad, like mm -hmm. really, really bad. And by the grace of God, Accutane worked. Uh -huh. And my dermatologist sat me down and was like, look, you have to have a skincare routine. You have to take care of your skin or else things could get bad again. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying I don't have a pimple every now and then, because I do, for sure. Um, but having a skincare routine is so important. And look, fellas who are listening to this <laughs> right now, if you don't moisturize your face, if you don't have a skincare routine, if you don't use a daggum washcloth in the dang shower, Crap. what are you doing? I know. What are you doing? Wear chapstick, wear moisturizer. You ain't gotta do all the daggum like toner and sunscreen yeah. and all that stuff. Do the bare minimal. It ain't that Come hard. On, it can't yes. be that hard. That's right. So I'll say that to the day I die that I will always have a skincare routine. And my dad looks wonderful, and he is 60 years old, and he takes care of his skin. He takes care of his face. He takes care of everything. And that's okay. Body. I love that. I'm like, I it's more it. than okay, and I stand by it. Like I'm gonna, the business is right here. I'm standing on that. That's right. For sure. We're no gonna get you a skincare uh, yeah. brand deal right here. <laughs> Cam is awesome. I work with Bubble. We okay, love Bubble. We okay. <laughs> and Neutrogena. We love them all. We love them all. We're going we're gonna to move into some fun stuff right. right now and some questions from the audience, okay? So Perfect. let's go into that. Let's do it. Do you want children? And if so, how many? Yes, ma'am. I would love to have two boys and a little girl. Okay. I would love to be a girl dad. I think being a girl dad would be so nice. Yes. Oh. I would love it. Um, and... <coughs> I think having two older brothers uh, and a little sister, like two, two older brothers, two a little sister, I think mm -hmm. would be wonderful because they could protect her and uh, also, you know, play with her and beat her up and all that. Right. Like they, they could beat each other up, but also love each other and yeah. protect her when she gets older. Yeah, so. I love that. What celebrity have you been told you were you are remind people of? Oh, when I first got on TikTok, it was actually Luke P from The Bachelorette. Luke um, P. I'm gonna have to look him up. He apparently looks really similar to me, and then Theo James as well Okay. Um, was another one that I get. I don't really see the Theo James one, but I do see kind of the Luke P one. Uh-huh. Uh, but, I mean, honestly, I see myself as Cameron. Yes. You know, I don't see That's myself good. as there is a... Your favorite one. drink? Ooh, coffee. 
for sure. Coffee, okay. Or water, good water. Your favorite music you listen to on a road trip, like? Ooh, it'll go back and forth between Morgan Wallen and Elevation Worship. Okay. Uh, I think, well, actually, I have a specific way I do it. So, like, during the daytime, I love to listen to country music because mm -hmm. the, windows can, like, the windows can roll down and yeah. it'll be beautiful outside and everything. When it's nighttime, I love listening to worship music because yeah. it just feels like it's me and God. Like, it feels like we're just in a room together. Yeah. Just, like, wholeheartedly, just, like, I can cry, I can dance, I can jump up and down on the truck, and it doesn't matter. Yeah. So that's I what love I that. Yeah. Right. Girls, this is a good one right here. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, one word that you think can be a key to being happy. One word. I think happiness is BS. I think it's joy. Mm -hmm. uh, joy is so different. So, um, oh, I just said a lot more than one word. Uh, but I don't think happiness is real. I think happiness comes and goes, but yeah. joy is eternal. So, I would say Jesus. That's right. That's my one word. But <laughs> you know what joy is? J O Y. Jesus, others, and yourself. Oh, that's good right there. Whoever you. made that little acronym made Look that. Us. That was good. <laughs> <laughs> if you had a warning label, what would it say? Uses way too many alarms. Uses, Uses way, way too many alarms. Also, <laughs> can't multitask and might be a little late. <laughs> I'll never be late for a date, but I promise you, I might be late for a couple. Okay. Because I always am on time. Yes. I just end up doing things that make me late. It's okay to be punctual. Yeah. I love that's okay. I got here right at one oh one. We're supposed to be at one. I got here at one oh one. I wanted to tell you guys. Uh, like, I'm, I'm, one I'm minute here, minute. but I'm one minute up. <laughs> uh, two small things that you feel brighten every day. Like you just if if you have those two things they just brighten your day. Ooh. Um my time with the Lord in the mornings. Mm -hmm. And number two, like sending voice messages to people. I love it. Like my, yeah. my pastor talked about it. Uh, I go to Shoreline City, and, and they talk all the time about this. But like, you know the, how many people's gonna be at Shoreline City in Texas? Oh, I bet a couple people. They're Shoreline be City. Fire! I found my man in church. <laughs> I listened to a cattle call, and Cam said that's where he go to church. So I'm gonna go I there. I wasn't even gonna ask that Cam because I thought you'd be stopped. At you church. know what? You just said it. I'm keeping it in here. Just there are people that know where I live and like apartment wise, like people that know oh, like my actual genuine apartment um, and and everything. And, and I, it's not like I, I have purposefully put it out there, mm -hmm. but like in some of my videos, like my day in life videos, mm -hmm. I like post a picture of it. And you know, there's a couple couple people on my TikTok and Instagram that can see that. Yeah. And there's probably 10 people that live in my apartment complex that know that I live there too. Oh, they don't know where I live, yeah. like which one. Um, thank you, Lord. But, <laughs> you know, I, I, trust that, I trust that people are good yeah, is what, is what right. I'd say. Um, but, Just look out the window yes, or something before you open your door. 100%. And Wait, so, the second, so the second thing, really quick, I'm sorry to cut you off. No. The voice message thing. When you are having a bad day, mm -hmm. I promise you the best thing you can do is give to other people. Yes. Like, think about, and th don't think about it negatively, but like, think about it just from a, a face value perspective of when you give to somebody, when you do something nice for somebody, mm -hmm. it makes you feel so filled up. Like, it's crazy. Absolutely. So, yeah. when I wake up in the mornings and I don't feel my best, like, I'll shoot a voice message to some of my friends, or like my mom, my sister, mm -hmm. uh, my dad, my brothers, whoever it is. Whoever's like on my phone or a friend that I haven't talked to in a while, yeah. just shoot them a voice note and it always brightens my day. So I'd say my time with the Lord and voice message. That's good. I love them. They're the best. You wish that we were talking about where you live. Yes, walk, walk. <laughs> Creepiest thing someone has DM'd you. Oh, man. Creepiest thing. Uh, probably $500 for some used underwear, I think. <gasps> oh. Yeah, that one's tough. Oh. Yeah, Did you send tough. them? Of course. <laughs> 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 yeah, now I'm found out I was rich. Let's go. Yeah, I paid. I, I paid for my parents' uh, Christmas gifts for that. Oh, well, that's nice. I'm kidding. I did not do that. I did not do that. I promise. But that is a couple. There's a couple weird oh, damn shirt sure that I get. <laughs> uh, girls, sending five hundred. He'll give you. He'll give you some undies. Um, I will send you one toe picture. What sure. is your kryptonite weakness when it comes to a woman? I like a woman who's tall. I really love that a mm -hmm. lot. Like a woman who's tall, I think is beautiful. Okay. Um, but 
but she loves the Lord more than she could ever love me, and I realize that, and I see that. Good night. I'm out. Yes. <laughs> I'm out like so that's that. attractive to you but, just as much as it is to a woman that God is the draw. A hundred percent. Yeah. God is the draw, and yeah. also, if she has really pretty eyes and like a really pretty smile combined with being tall and loving the Lord. I know somebody like that. Really. No way. I know somebody <laughs> got pretty eyes and lips. Ooh, yeah, I got some yes, like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -mm. Uh, let's see. We've answered those. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go to some questions that people had for you. Perfect. Okay. Can I marry you? I don't know who. Sure. This. Okay. Yes, ma'am. You can't say sure. <laughs> you're looking. You're pursuing somebody. You cannot you unless you are devoted to the Lord and you are wonderful. Yeah. Because He made you. Um, how do you hear God's voice? Everybody in the world needs to have one of these. Mm -hmm. My ex-girlfriend showed me about the talk, taught me about this. Mm -hmm. It's called a thin place. It's a place where you feel like the distance between you and God is paper thin. Where like you can just reach out and grab it. Find that place and go there early and often. For me, it's my bedroom mm -hmm. and it is my truck. And it's the mountains of North Georgia or Nashville, or just fishing in a stream somewhere. Mm -hmm. There's no noise, no phone, no nothing like that. Um, and you are just alone out there with the Lord and your thoughts. That's awesome. Um, That's good. I feel Him and I hear Him the most. Yeah. That way. And also when when I just quiet like my life. Quiet. When I quiet mm -hmm. the noise in my truck. When I quiet like that's why the bedroom is like such a big one for me because I don't really bring my phone in there unless like I put my phone like. On the other side of the room when I want to wake up mm -hmm. um, but my bedroom is such a big one because there's nothing that happens there it's just me and the Lord on my knees every night praying to him mm -hmm. it's just intimate time right yeah. there like there's no noise in there I don't bring a speaker in there I don't, I don't listen to music in yeah. there that's where I go to sleep that's where I go to talk to because things become distractions they do they can sure. be anything can become a distraction everything can um let's see <laughs> One particular girl, I'm assuming she's from Brazil. Yes, she says, do you think about doing work in another country? Uh, for example, Brazil. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to go to Brazil, but I actually would love to do some work in, in another country. Um, yeah. There's a couple modeling opportunities to work in um, like Cape Town, South, South Africa, and mm -hmm. a couple other countries like that. Which South so, Africa is I awesome. Be I, I mean, it's going to be beautiful, and oh, it's yeah. very rich there. Oh, yeah. So it's beautiful. more of the Sierra Leone mm -hmm. type. Yeah. Is the trenches really that part of Africa? Never been. I don't, I don't know, but I, I trust your judgment on that. Um, that's where Lily always wanted to go was Sierra Leone. Really? Mm -hmm. Sierra Leone. Do you feel pressure to settle? Which I guess we've discussed a lot of that today. So I don't. But do you feel pressure to like find a wife tomorrow, or are you just waiting on God? I will say this. I think it's a it's a it's a hard it's an interesting medium um, because. Actually, I just set up one of my best friends and one of my other best friends, and they live here, and they just started dating mm -hmm. like today. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, and my other buddy, my best friend is getting married. Uh, my other buddy's engaged. My other buddy's engaged. Like Five of my absolute best friends in the world are engaged or are dating somebody seriously, mm -hmm. and I'm not. Um, and I think that they found the woman that God has for them. But there's a lot of pressure from... The world. I think we live in such like a comparison world and a comparison yeah. on a state of mind with social media because everything you see online, you're like, oh, I want that, I want this, like I want this relationship, I want yeah. this woman. That's so dangerous. And, and it's I so fake. It's I so mean, fake. not not that certain relationships aren't real yeah. to a degree, um, but it's always going to be the good stuff. You're not going to see people full on fighting. No doubt and how they fight yeah. their pattern of fighting and how they get through it mm -hmm. on the internet either mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I say the same thing I, I always say that like whatever whoever the woman is that god has for me and, and whoever i end up dating and marrying is going to get 23 hours 59 minutes and 30 seconds of me mm -hmm. and the world is going to get the 30 seconds yeah like tiktok and instagram like that's not who i am that's yeah. not that's not my identity. That's mm -hmm. what I do, and I love it, and I yeah. enjoy it, and I'm so thankful for it. But there's so much more. And so I think I do I do feel the pressure, but I also know God's plan for me. Mm -hmm. And so I, I choose to stick to that. Yeah. If I don't, then I definitely feel pressure. <laughs> um, okay, last question, and then there's something I want to do with you. Yes, ma'am. Um, what 
is your favorite, this is a question from someone, what is your favorite Bible scripture? John 13, 7. For you may not know now what I'm doing, but later you will understand. I think that's so crucial to every single part of your whole entire life. Mm -hmm. Every part of us, of our lives as Christians and our lives as human beings. Yeah. Um, that there's so many things in our life that, like, that happen and we don't get it. Uh, but I think that God does not let, he does not make things happen, but God allows things to happen to increase our love and increase our trust in him. Yeah. So make us um, stronger. Yeah, make us well. stronger. Make us yeah. seek him. And all like when it's good, are you gonna seek him? I know when it's bad we're gonna choose him, but when it's good, what yeah. are you gonna do? Are you gonna turn your face to That's him? That's right. So John thirteen seven. Yeah, I love it's that. My favorite. Because we can connect the dots eventually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, oh I it's did like, it. Oh my God. goodness. I'm I walking into that, that answer prayer that I yes. asked you for you delivered. I did, I'm not in that relationship yes. because now look at the one I have. Yeah. Right? Look at it. the one that I have now. <laughs> I have a Okay. That's crazy. This is what I do personally, just kind of me and God and this little fun thing. And I do it a lot if I get a fortune cookie. Mm -hmm. I went and ate yesterday and got two fortune cookies and I was like, okay, they gave me two. I love it. I'm going to do this with Cam. Yeah. You can pick one of these, not been open. I don't know what they say, okay. but we're going to share them. And I always look at it like God's giving me a word. I agree. Do you see good. that? Do you see that too? Yeah, it's good. Okay, so pick whichever one you want, All right. and then we're going to open them and see what they say. So it's going to be a little loud on here right now on Spotify. <laughs> but we're going to open them. And I love to eat them, by the way. You don't like fortune cookies? You're crazy. I love them. Watch mine say, get another fortune. <laughs> mm, I got a good one. It's good. What's your say? You hold the key to success. That's good. I would agree. That is. I know I don't hold it, hold it but, but Jesus listen, does. You just Jesus does about, through me, though. Yeah, for sure. that's what we just talked yeah. about. That oh, is, good. God is the success, and you hold the key right there. No doubt. Make time for what you love. Oh, come on and now. What am I doing? Come on now. Yeah. Here. I'm telling you, this is good. You're so good. I always, at this deal. I always feel like it's confirmation. I agree. You know, like you're walking in the prayer in, yeah. in, in the blessing that God has for you. Yeah. Like, I think that's so good. You hold the key to success. Well, you do what you love. Yeah. You're so good at it too. So thank you, Cam. Thank you so much for letting me be on here. Yes, I appreciate you more you than you. Thank you for being here. Of course. Thank you so much. Well, guys, that's wrapping it up. Let's but do it. But I, will you come back on and let's talk again because I don't feel, I think we could just really talk about so many different things about relationships. You as know? long as y'all prepared for a three and a half hour episode. <laughs> I know. Y'all sure. know we can just do YouTube and that. Yeah. But, okay, <laughs> guys, thank you for tuning in to Cattle Call and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank y'all so much. Bless see y'all. Blessings. Jesus loves you so much. I don't know who got that.